Hey, this is Eddie Hale, and I want to show you how I made the Caterpillar blended from Lesson 9 in my Adobe Illustrator class. Here we are in Illustrator. I start out by making an ellipse. I'll make sort of a biggish ellipse. We'll start with the, uh, with the shoulder side of this Caterpillar. It has a gradient in it, so a little bit of gradient review for you. I'm going to start with a dark green on this side of the gradient and a very light green on this side of the gradient. It's a radial gradient, so I change it to radial over here. And then I want to adjust where that, where that uh, highlight is on the gradient, so I move to the gradient tool. And I can use this little tool if I want to. I can move the round end here, and it changes where the center point of that, point of that gradient is. I can rotate the gradient around here. Um, I did want to remind you that I seldom move these sliders around in the gradient palette over here. I just leave them at the ends and I adjust the gradient over here with the gradient tool. So there's one of my gradients, or there's one of my little segments for the caterpillar. Then I am, um, oh, he doesn't have a black stroke on him, he has a dark green stroke on him. So I will go to the stroke panel and tell it to have a dark green stroke. There's one of my segments for the caterpillar. He has legs. I'm going to switch to the pen tool and draw his legs. He's got little round feet like this. I'll draw them in one piece. They are just filled with a regular green. I'll choose some middle green here for their fill and um, dark green for the stroke. And then I'll send them to back. Shift command. Shift command left bracket sends them to back. Yeah, something like that. So there's my segment. I'm going to option drag him over here, holding the option key while I use the move tool. Then I'm going to um, I'm going to scale him down, but I don't want the stroke to scale. So I'm going to double click on the scale tool and tell the stroke. Uh, yeah, uncheck this so it does not scale the strokes and effects. Scale him down. Now I'm going to blend between this one and that one. But what I have to do first is I have to make this act like one unit. So I have to select it and then go to Object Group or Command G. I'm going to select this side and I'm going to hit that Command G to group that side. And then I will blend these two together. Let's pause for a moment and see how many segments do I want. One, two, three. Okay, I count 14, 14 segments plus his head. Going back to Illustrator, I'm going to blend these together. I'm going to take the Blend tool right here, and I'm going to double-click it. Double-click the tool brings up this dialog box. I'm going to tell it I want specified steps. If I want 14 and I've already got two here, then I need 12 intermediate steps. I'm going to click OK. I need to now click on the things. Um, I can click on them to blend them. Click, click. Uh, I'll just do that. Click on this shape, click on that shape, and it'll blend between them. Oh my goodness, I did not want that to happen. I wanted this bigger section to be in front. So I get to try another thing. I get to go to Object, Blend, Reverse, Front to Back. That will bring this section up to the front. So there's my little caterpillar. He's getting there. I need to um, make him curve like that. So I have to draw a new spine that starts here, goes up, comes down, and goes back up. I'm going to use the pen tool to do that. Starts here. It's a little bit higher up. Touches the leaf here. And then he comes up. Something like that. Um, experiences show me that the smoother this curve can be, the better it will blend. Um, you need to, um, he needs to be, these handles need to be doing equal work. So there's his new spine. I'm going to replace this spine with that spine down there. Select the two, go to object, blend, replace spine. And there you go. There he's got his new little spine there. How does he look? I think I want this last segment to be a little bit smaller. I'm going to double click on that and go into this. Um, this is, I call this a group edit mode. I can select this part of the group and shrink it down a little bit. 
then I can double click to, to get out of there. If I don't go into that mode, then every time I click on this, he's all selected. There's my spine, there's my last anchor point. I'm gonna pull it forward. Now I need to draw his shadow under him. So I'm going to make another blend. It starts out as just a, an ellipse here filled with gray. No stroke. I'm going to option drag that ellipse up here. Make it bigger. And I'll blend between those two. So I select them both. I'm going to double click my blend tool down here and check to make sure it's still specified steps 12. Click OK. Another way you can make a blend happen is to go to Object Blend Make. It's similar to clicking on the two points with the tool. I want to replace that spine also. I'm going to create a spine that starts out under him and then a little separation that comes back to where he's touching the leaf and then raises up again out here. I need to adjust that curve again to make it really smooth. Let's try that. So notice that it's filled, it doesn't matter. I select this blend and this spine and I go to Object, Blend, Replace Spine. And there's my new spine. Very poorly done because I believe of these handles. Maybe I have too long a span and too few circles. So I can do this as long as nobody notices, notices. I can click on this blend and I can go up to Object, Blend, Blend Options, and I can say, I'd really like a few more blends. I'll do 14 steps in between there. Not enough. I'll do 18 steps. There, a little better. Now they cover more. Now I can move it so that it touches him right where he um, is touching the leaf. Shift Command, send it back to put that shadow behind him. Now the leaf, I'm going to let you draw the leaf, but see how it's a gradient from dark to light? So you draw that leaf shape. Draw it much better than I'm going to. But I'm going to um, fill this with a gradient, a linear gradient, something like this. I'm going to change its direction so that it goes from... Uh, I'm going to drag again. It's something like this. Again, I want you to do the leaf, the beautiful leaf shape. I'm going to send this to back. I just want to show you this. I don't want this. I don't want a weird gray shadow on top of that leaf. I want that leaf to get darker where the shadow touches it. So the trick there, remember, is to go to the um, transparency panel and tell the blending mode on this shadow to be multiply. And then that light gray will just turn everything below it a little bit darker. And it's actually a darker shadow down here than it is up here. I am also going to let you draw the beautiful face on top of there. Um, as long as it's com as complex as this, you can draw anything you want on there. And as long as it's rated G, suitable for all audiences. So that's blending. And blending groups and lots of other things about blending. I do want to show you one thing. I'm going to, um, I'm going to do it wrong once. I'm going to go to Object, Blend, Release. You can always release a blend like that. I'm going to delete the spine. And then this would be the wrong way. If you go to, I'm going to go to Object, Ungroup. So these guys are not groups anymore. They're just single shapes. If I blend between these two shapes, I want you to see what happens. I'm going to double click this. I, I want those 12 steps. And then I'm going to go to Object, Object, Blend, Make. And watch this. Whoa, what happened there? Well, it blended 12 steps from his feet up to his body. And then it blended 12 steps over here to these feet and then 12 steps up to his body again here. I hit Command minus. So that is not what I want. You have to group the pieces first and then the groups will act like one piece as they blend forward. All right, that's how you blend, that's how you blend a group. Thanks for watching.